every second within every minute of an hour is just as important as the impact made in those moments. Although moments can only be experienced once, the reflection of the time spent and energy shared can last a lifetime. First impressions are vital. Actions can't be erased. Love is a feeling. Your life is someone's message. With every person you may come in contact with, the reality is that they'll always remember only certain things about you. Time doesn't stop. Life has to go on. Purpose must be fulfilled. And the impact continues. My name is Anthony Dupree, and I am a performing entertainer from Wilmington, Delaware. Only being 27, I've had the amazing opportunity to experience so many great things in this lifetime. I'm a Renaissance man. Not only do I act and sing and travel and write and even direct, but I also take pleasure in the Anthony Dupree brand in other ways, like releasing my very own music, releasing my book, fragrance lines, and even going international to participate in a reality TV show. Being a part of the entertainment industry, it ain't easy, but I'm so very thankful that I've had the opportunity to learn and work close with some of the greatest to ever do it, such as Robin Gibbons, Jackie Harry, Shirley Murdoch, Johnny Gibb, Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, Vivica Fox, Clifton Powell, and so many other great people. I consider myself blessed. Aside from those things, there are others who have helped contribute to my success. And I take pride in those people. <laughs> That's right, I'm a family man. I love everything about family, from the coke outs to just being around and laughing and loving on each other and even crying sometimes. Those are the vital moments that I take to heart that help me get through whatever hardship it is that's going on in my life. And not only that, but I am an advocate of my community. Being a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, I know what it takes to lead and serve. And I have both, leadership and servanthood. Now listen, don't get me wrong. I am proud of the things that I've accomplished thus far, but this ain't no boasting session. I just wanna be an example so that I can help motivate and inspire other people and allow my life to pave the way for others. I am always on the road, whether I'm attending industry events, performing in shows, promoting my merchandise, or just simply traveling. But when I come home, I just like to chill and relax. So today I made up in my mind that I'm not doing nothing. I'm gonna sit in this bed and I'm gonna do what I gotta do because this week is a little busy for me. I have a podcast interview tomorrow in DC and then later on tomorrow night, I got to head back to Delaware just so that I can perform at the singer's room. Hello? Hey, what you doing, baby? No, I'm watching TV about to start this work. What's up? Work? Yeah. It's bucket day. You might as well come on, everybody. All right, go to bucket day. It's about it's, to start in a minute. It's what? Bucket day. And see, that's the thing about being home. It's so many surprises, you never know what to expect. Yeah, I forgot. So you already there? Now, when my grandies were all our grandies, they still getting ourselves together, but we all want to go down there together. So you need to hurry up, put your work up, and come on so you can come down to the park. All right. Well, let me get yeah. dressed. I gotta get dressed right quick. Well, throw that shit on and let's go. My family can be so demanding at times. I mean, what makes them think that I need to just drop everything? Come on, I got things to do. And it's only a little period of time that I got to do it. Now, although I ain't gonna be here long, I definitely wanna go and show face. I mean, besides, I ain't seen some of these people in so long.
so I'm dressed and we have bucket day with us. <laughs> now let me tell you about bucket day. Bucket day is just like a big family reunion when everybody come together that used to live in the same inner city, you know, projects. They all come together and we just turn up. This is where I come from. You got kids running around, you got food, drinks, everybody just having a good time, dancing, laughing, hugging. Yo, it's so many people here. And for real, for real, I think I just might stay a little bit just to see what's going on with it going on. <laughs> I come from a musical family. I mean, I got some singing aunts, some rapping uncles, some spoken word cousins. Listen, we do it all. I knew it wasn't gonna take long before my uncle got on that mic. That's my uncle, y'all. They call him Disco B, man. He the king of slang. People near and far, they all scream his name. Um. <laughs> These are the moments I live for. Just to see so many smiling faces and everybody in harmony. I am a product of my environment. Now they say everybody don't make it out the hood. But being motivated and being the man that I've become because of these people, I'm going to bring my inspiration back to the hood. Today is a big day for me because I'll be appearing as a guest on the DMV podcast this evening in Washington, D.C. Now, before I go, I got to meet up with my best friend, Marquis. Now, listen, let me tell you something about Marquis. Marquis, he assists me with the Anthony Dupree brand. He handles the logistics of it all. So we're going to meet up and discuss a few things. And he just want to make sure I'm ready. So we're going to see. I know, I know, I know. All over the East Coast. Right, exactly, literally. <laughs> all right, first thing is we got the 5 o'clock DMV podcast at downtown DC. So you ready for that? Yeah, I am. Um, but I just want to know, um, what are some things like, you tell me a little bit about it so I know what I'm in my social media. So they pretty much just talk about current events and things going on in the black community. So. Oh, okay. This podcast interview means so much to me because it allows me to connect with my audience in so many different ways. I want to be able to get across to them that I stand with them. Just make sure you prepare for any question they may ask. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. And then tonight, you know, we have that, uh, performance nomad yes i didn't realize how quick i needed to jump back on the highway to head back to delaware just so that i can be on time for sound check tonight so i pretty much got to jump back on the highway right. once i leave the interview to head to sound check at nine o'clock so oh it's at nine so when you leave the dinner podcast you have to go straight to sound check at nine o'clock nine o'clock that's even worse what was i thinking booking two different things in two different cities on the same day. Just make sure I get there one time. Right. You know. So going back to the Pop Demi podcast, are you ready to uh, reveal the big news? The big news. We're going to see. Okay. We'll see. All right, so we got a full day. I guess it's time to uh, get your head right and uh, let's just make it happen. Cool. Get changed and uh, let's go. Appreciate you. All right, now. I don't know what to expect because you never know what questions may be asked or even the wild card that may be put on the table. But meeting with Marquis today, he's giving me that confidence that I need to make it happen. Once we arrived, I instantly got nervous. I mean, everything started hitting my mind all at once. I just needed time to just meditate and pray and just get myself together. Once I got myself together, it was all good. Coming full circle. I appreciate that. I'm humbled by that. Too. Yeah. And just to add in there, we're definitely gonna get uh, an acapella um, at the end of the show. Don't listen to the end of the show because yeah. Anthony Pree will be seeing acapella. Look, um, you can sing. You can do a monologue. You can run up. Anything. I'll just do what I do when I do it. Oh yeah. Wait. Wait. Yeah. Till you get the show. <laughs> It's so interesting because during interviews, I'm often asked, you know, what it is that I do. And I don't mind talking about myself. However, the two most important things to me 
is just to let them know that God did it, number one. And then two, I made the decision. You don't have to settle for anything that you're not comfortable with. We all get the same 24 hours in a day, but it's exactly what you choose to do with it that determines your next move. Is there any... The, the fragrance. What in the world? Okay, first of all, let me tell you. Let me tell you. When I when I was on when I was on Instagram, you know I'm a, I'm a researcher. She is. They might call it you might call it stalking. Yes, uh, I'm a legal. social. I'm a legal legal social stalker. It's what I have to do for a living. I have to get the facts. And I'm scrolling and all facts facts. So I'm going through the Instagram and I saw that everyone had a book and a glass and, and, oh, wow. and a bottle. I'm like, whoa, what are they drinking? And I'm like. That's perfume. And then I'm like, oh, I bet you it smells like that book. <clears throat> and I'm like, oh, I, don't I, I don't know why. I don't know why. Just instantly, I'm like, book smells like the perfume. I don't know. So you buy the perfume and you get the book. What what possessed the perfume? Because the pictures were cute. Like, it's like an Armani commercial in here. Like, oh, wow, wow. It's a nice little trench, a little peacock. Like, so, so I launched two fragrances. One legend, mint cologne. And then the other, Royal Love, Females Perfume. So basically, the idea for my fragrance came from me going to a convention. I mean, I saw different apparel and other merchandise, but I didn't see nothing, you know, indicating fragrance for men. So I actually, you know, was playing around with the idea. So uh, what's next for you, Anthony? What's the next move? So my I'm next move, so mm -hmm. I'm so glad. First of all, I'd like to thank you. I, I could have this earlier on, Aww, but um, for the opportunity, like you You're know, so I am humbled by this opportunity because I realize that through these moments, mm -hmm. this makes me a better person. But I'm in the most vital position right now this week. That's why it's so like inspiring to me this week. But I'm about to leave my nine to five job this week. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just revealed the big news. I mean, I couldn't resist the moment. Felt too good. Yes. Okay, so just to make a long story short, I left my nine to five job to pursue my career full time in the entertainment industry. Now, I love children. I have a passion for helping and assisting in education, but I went to school for mass communications with a concentration in television and radio, and it was time. So I made the decision. I activated my faith. I prayed about it. and. I took the move. I made the move. And, That's real. And I realized, you know, I've seen a Steve Harvey right. video about guys taking leaps and jumps. And I actually wanted to do it last year, but it wasn't the right time. I prayed about it, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, I yeah. really felt like this was the year to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, this is my last week of, you know, work. And, you know, I'm ready to take that leap. Yeah. I feel like I have it. How, yeah. can you, how can you be surrounded by great people and not be great? So I'm, I, I'm carrying that mindset. I'm gonna carry that mindset with me wherever I go and just yeah. tell the message that if I did it, you can do it too. Sometimes God will make things a little uncomfortable for you just to force you out of a situation that you've been so used to for so long. And that's what I felt like I was doing in my job as a dean of students. I felt like I was being complacent and I felt like the longer I was being there, I was gonna lose my passion for what it was that I really wanted to do, which was be on stage and be in films and just go out to the people and touch the people. Now, it was hard leaving my nine to five. It was hard leaving those children. But at the end of the day, I believe that I walked away with so much grace and they believed in me enough. And that was just the amount of encouragement that I needed from them. So the interview actually was dope. I really enjoyed being with everybody, all the interviewers. And you know, I went to school with two of them. So it was just like old times. Okay, so I leave Marquis, I get in my car, and I make my way to the highway, only to find out that I am in traffic. This, this is no good. Now I'm panicking. I don't know what to think. I don't know what they think, and I just need to get there. I'm trying to figure out how this is all going to play out. I want to hit Albia, but I don't want to make him panic too soon. So I'm going to push my way to see exactly how close I can get to the Delaware line before I call him. And just exactly what I need, Albie ends up calling me. Yo, you close? Yo, I'm stuck in traffic, y'all. Stuck in traffic? Yes, I'm, yo, I'm trying to push. It, the time ran over a little bit um, at my interview. So, like, I'm pushing right now, and I'm actually on... 95 now I'm trying to like I'm almost at the, the Delaware line. Oh come on. Man. Oh my god. 
I know, I know. This is beyond crazy. I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to feel right now. I'm nervous. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, prepare myself. I'm in my car listening to the music. But it's just not working. And the traffic just keeps slowing down. I don't know if I'm going to even make it to my performance. How am I going to make it? Everybody's here waiting for you. And, um, uh, Yeah. Oh my god. This is, I'm I'm like I say I'm about to cross the, the border, the line, so I'm almost there. God was on my side with this one. I'm telling you, let me tell you something. There's no way possible that I should have arrived when I did. I had time to pray with the band. I had time to change my clothes. I mean, yo, God looked out for me on this one. How y'all feeling tonight? <laughs> there are so many things that I've learned about performing just by performing. Now you have acting and singing, which are totally different things. However, they both work hand in hand with each other. Now, one thing about performing for me, I know how to remove myself out the way and my emotions and my thoughts and really allow myself to connect and feel what the audience is feeling in that moment. Whenever I'm performing live, I always like to give my band a little bit. It's nothing for these brothers to just come and just execute. They my brothers. Music to me is safety. I mean, I grew up in a house where I was the only singer. However, just by hearing tunes that my dad would play on Sunday mornings and, you know, just learning lyrics to the songs, I really realized that in that moment, I was singing. Tonight was amazing. And I'm telling you, just by performing tonight, it really gave me the motivation that I need for next week because I'll be shooting my very first music video. Usually after a performance, I like to go home and just relax and go to sleep. But tonight, it was a little different, especially because I had to prepare. So I set my station up in my bed, I opened up my emails and I began finalizing the rundown, you know, for my music video. I usually turn my music on and my phone off so that I won't become disturbed. And I zone out. As I'm finalizing my rundown sheet, a notification from Facebook pops up on my computer screen from my cousin Jasmine. As I'm reading this message that she just left me, I'm noticing that something may just be wrong. Now, although it's late, she called me, so I gotta go see what's up. So I got your message, and you were saying something. You were saying that you had just got out of the hospital. I don't know I've been away or whatever, so you got to fill me in. Yeah, whatever. it's like, it was just so much stuff going on. And like, I just felt as though it was like no other way. Like, so I tried to like take my own life. What? At the time, it was just like, it was nothing else for me to do. I just felt so like lifeless. I was going through too much, like, I started taking pills, drinking more, just to avoid what I was feeling. Like, I was feeling left out, lonely, I didn't have anybody to talk to. It's just so amazing how much people go through and you really don't realize it until you do actually get in their presence. When I did attempt to do it. I was comfortable. So that really, really scared me. I tried it a couple years ago. I tried to take pills and <clears throat> that was never on paper or anything. But this time it was because my sister had called the police and they bust in and they found me charged. Oh my God. I just was like, okay, forget it. And I text everybody, told them that I love them. I wanted to be with my aunt. 
I put my phone on vibrate, left it inside of my bedroom, went inside of the bathroom, placed the towel down in the tub, got the scissors, some really, really sharp scissors, um, laid my head back, and I proceeded to slit my wrist. No, 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 no. This is devastating, not only for her, but for me too. Like I said, I'm, I'm a family man, so to hear her go through this, it really pricked my heart. I still feel alone. My thoughts, is my mind is constantly going and never stops. I worry about tomorrow. I worry about what is my purpose on life. I worry about where am I going to be at in five stuff? years. What was the food? Yo, no, no, for real. For some, it's easy to take ownership over your life when faced with these problems. But for others, it can be a struggle sometimes because they constantly feel that they're never going to be good enough. I used to come to Granny's mm -hmm. and you know my mom lived directly across, across the, street. the street. So if I could walk out of my out of Granny's front door, I could just look at my mom's house. It wasn't a street in between us. It was pure grass. That's all it was. It was grass. Project, yeah. yeah. So every like me, my sister, she would try to. I'm not gonna say I didn't listen. I listen sometimes, but. She knew she was eight years older than me, so she knew what was going on. With me, I didn't know what was going on. I knew that my mom was my mom, my grandmother was my grandmother, and I also knew that you live with your mom. I never realized how much this impacted Jasmine's world. I mean, not having a relationship with her mother, that's something that every child wants to have. But for her and her situation, her case, it's not. And it really is bothering her to the point to where it's causing her to make some decisions in her life that she didn't even think she would make. You can't just keep everything in the inside because if you do, your thoughts and what you're feeling is going to overpower your mind. So why didn't you call me? Like, I know I because was away and all that, but I'm still wanna, here, though. Yeah, you are, but I didn't want to stress you out. Like, I know what you're doing and everything that you're trying to succeed in, and I, I didn't want to bother you with that type of mm. energy. I didn't want to do but that. stuff like that, I don't care. Like, I would stop in the middle of what I got going on to take a break and see what you, see what's going on. And Suicide, depression, stress is real. It's okay to go and get help. I'm so very thankful that even though my cousin experienced what she experienced, that she wasn't too prideful enough to go seek help. Everything now is kind of starting to make sense on why things happened in the past, but I learned that now, I didn't know it then. But all of those things that I went through, it made me who I am today. Like, But I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna try to paint a picture like I, I'm okay or I'm happy or my life is so perfect because it's not. And I know for a fact that everybody, some way, somehow feel that Loneliness sometimes, you could be married with kids, seven kids, nine kids, a pet, a dog. Everybody feel that. Every, your, your mind constantly goes. It's like your mind ain't not, money can't stop your mind from going, fame can't stop you. I appreciate this moment because I am discovering so much of me in her. It never stops. And sometimes I feel like my mind needs to be at peace. And by me, Going through what I going, what I'm going through, or what I did go through, I know that I can help others. Like I want to eventually start a group for people in the world who actually are like scared to go get help, or think that they can't get help, or think that they normal because everybody has to speak, like speak out on how they feeling. You can't keep things bottled in because that right there will kill you. Yeah. It will really kill you. So I learned to like express my feelings more and not be angry. I come from a family of alcoholics, drug addicts, those who may be suffering with other addictions and even high school dropouts. So when I'm out connecting with people, it's easy for me to understand the struggle. It's easy for me to say, listen, I know what you've been through because I've been through something similar. And that's all sometimes people want to hear. Me more, like I learned so much inside of the facility and with people that's not like me, different type of people. The type of family that I have, we go through everything together. We may argue, we may fuss, we may fight, but at the end of the day, we won't be calling each other the next day. And that's just point blank period. I don't care what's going on because life is too short. And I don't want anything to happen detrimental to my family. So I make sure 
that I keep in touch with my family. Today is the official day of my very first music video shoot for my latest single, Isolated. I have an early afternoon call time and it continues throughout the next day. Anytime I do something on a major platform, I always make sure that I save some time to express some gratitude and think about my aunt who paved the way for me musically. So while I'm in town, I made sure that I stopped by her grave site just to see her. This is my first time going to visit my aunt's site since she left this earth. And I'm a little uneasy. As I fell to my knees and just stared at her tombstone, I couldn't stop the tears from coming. You don't understand. My aunt meant everything, not only to me, but to the family. She was the glue that kept us all together, never judged anybody. She made sure that she was consistent in her word and she always loved you through any pain, problem, situation, or issue you had going on in your personal life, whether you revealed it to her or even if you kept it from her, she already could discern and pick up on emotions and feelings. And that's one thing that I miss about her so much because she pulled things out of you that you didn't want to release in those moments. And now that she's gone, I'm gonna make sure that I live out her legacy. Auntie, until we meet again, I love you forever. I just arrived to the set of my first music video shoot for my latest single, Isolated. This song means everything to me. It was produced by one of the best music producers in the tri-state area, Sadell Johnson. Being on the road for me can be so fulfilling. So when it's time to fly back home until the next fly out date, it can be a little depressing. And I noticed that I fell into depression, a state of depression, and it caused me to become complacent in my way of thinking because I thought that just because I was going back home that I would have to settle for the average life back at home. For this project, a team was put together and I must admit that they are all dope at what they do. First, starting with my high school friend and great business partner, Ron Van. I've been working with Ron for several years on other projects that I had going on in the past years. So I'm excited to see exactly how he's gonna help me put this thing together for this project. A part of the crew, you got Ron Van and Luna from Luna Visions, makeup artist Lila, fashion stylist Shanice Ori from SC Ori, and I cannot forget my model, the Sonya Event. What's up, I'm Rob Van Dam, small uh, DP today, Luna Visions. Um, we shoot an Anthony Walker video called Isolated. Uh, my concept of this video was basically to uh, take the words of the song that he was talking about. He was really talking about being isolated and being caught in a dream, so I wanted to kind of show his dream um, in reality and in his fantasy. For today's set, the concept is a dream. In my song, I talk about how much I fantasize about being in other places and, you know, making my impact there. So this is just a dream as an indication of where I want to be and where I'm trying to be and where I'm going to be. Hi, my name is Sonia Becca Breha. I'm an independent model. And today I got the chance to work with Anthony Dupree with a single, Isolated. Basically my role in it is to be a part of his like conscious. Basically I'm just a girl, but I'm representing more than just being somebody like he wanted to be with. I'm more of like depression, things he went through, like all the tribulations he's been through. I'm just there in his head and he's mentally battling to like free himself from all that to get away from it and escape. But it's like Sonya represents complacency and any distraction in my life that try to deter me from my pursuit of happiness. I'm 
everything is just coming together the way I plan for it to come together. The vibes are great. Everybody working together. I cannot wait to see the finished product of my new music video. And I'm even more excited because I was able to complete it right before I left to hit back on the road again. I am excited to be soon getting back on the road for my first national stage play tour with Priest Tyre Productions and the hit stage play Mama's Boy. One of the greatest things that I love about being home is receiving the most support from my family and friends. Although I'm excited and already started packing for this tour, it's a little bittersweet because it's always a struggle every time I gotta leave my family. Today, my aunt and my mom decided to throw a farewell party for me. Just as a way of saying congratulations. In my family, we have a tradition where we exercise expressing gratitude to one another, especially when it's a celebratory moment. God in him oh, is real. What? No matter what, he prays hey. for all. Yes. Yes. And it's not a joke because guess what? And I know the Lord, oh, yes, he's going to walk his walk and talk walk, his yes. walk. Because the Lord does not judge. Be judged or be not judged. So guess what? All of that is now. Walk of blood is there. Jones' blood is there. He's going to go places. He cannot go wrong. He's not going to go wrong. And I might say, I'm so blessed to have family that can put all issues and situations to the side and celebrate this moment with me. I mean, it means so much. It's very inspiring. Okay. His image stands out alone. Now, I don't need a camera. Because I'm speaking words from the heart. I don't need a camera because I'm speaking words from the heart. This man don't need Nothing but the glory of God, his hands, his family, which he already knows. He done blessed us in all of his skits, his, uh, his, 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 his shows and everything. He's going to be the blessing of all of us. And if I got to follow anybody, it would be him. And that's my word. I'm so encouraged and inspired in this moment probably more than my family. And it's simply because I've realized that all that I do, it's not for my own personal gain. It's to impact and pour into the lives of those surrounded by me. And I am excited that they understand that enough and can let me do what it is that I need to do while I'm away from them. I am on tour and I'm loving every bit of it. Priest Tyer, a phenomenal playwright from my own hometown, Wilmington, he did his thing with this one. I've worked with Priest Tyer Productions since 2015, and since then, my whole life has changed drastically. I mean, things that I've always knew would happen eventually happen instantly for me. And I'm so grateful for Priest Tyer to believe enough in me to cast me along with some phenomenal and amazing entertainers to go on tour with them. It's so exciting to share the stage with such legends like Johnny Gill and Shirley Murdoch and Jackie Harry and Barbin Gibbons and Nephew Tommy and Little G from Silk. What? One of the best moments that I love about being on tour, it gotta be sound check. I mean, checking out the theaters, yo, it's, it's so mind blowing just to see the many seats and the lighting. This is my niche and I'm ready for it. Being a 
around these people has not only been exciting, but it's teaching me so much about work ethic and even presentation. I always bring a pencil to class. Listen, whenever I fly back in town, I always like to do pop-ups. I never announce when I'm coming. I just show up. Tonight, I decided to just pop up to some of my friends' crib, just to see, you know, what their reaction would be. It's <laughs> all late, like, you know. <laughs> what's going on, man? What's up, bro? It's about time. I mean, I, I say the same thing. And just like old times, it was like I never left. <laughs> how y'all been? You doing good. wonderful, man. Of God, how you doing? I listen, I'm hanging in there. Well, it's good to see you. It's good to be seen. I yeah. What's up with y'all? Like, I feel it's like I haven't real. seen y'all in so long. You decided to sign Oh, my God. God. I know. <laughs> so, you feel me? Like, what's, what's been going on with y'all? I, I know I miss y'all with it. Oh, I was it. Is. Don't listen to this. Listen, me. that was a minister First of all, yes. first of all, that would have been blessed. <laughs> and when He's I not talking you, about the wedding. He's talking about the with, reception, please. Please don't that. What happened at the reception? I, all I can say he is. He took all the show. He had the show. Oh, oh, okay, but if it says that. These are some of the most greatest moments, joking and laughing with friends, and having them being able to fill me in on everything that I missed out on. Before we left, like, we had a party at Delicious house. Yeah. Where's Delicious at? That's now. That's my turn up one. Oh like she turns she made, up with good. She is back and that's what I'm saying. Oh, she makes she makes some good back well, and shit. Jalisha, a little, she's a little displaced right now. Her house caught on fire. Huh? She was so y'all didn't. Why didn't y'all tell me? Well, I mean, it just happened like yesterday. And then you wanna? Yeah, it just yeah, it just happened yesterday. She just texted me today. Yeah. But um, what? I woke up to it. I was like. Let me call her real quick. I can't believe it. We was just there. They were sleeping. Yes. They were yeah. So, I don't know. No, no, no. Start from the beginning. And just like that, my whole world has come crashing down. In this moment, I don't know how to feel. A part of me feel like I needed to be there for my friend. Anytime that I have to fly out, no lie, the night before, Jalisha has always been the one to host farewell get-togethers. And now to hear this story is just so tragic. I gotta go see what's up with her. Today is a free day. So I decided to go out and make use of it by helping and assisting my community. One of the things that I value about coming home is community service. It's so amazing to me to come home and be able to assist and help those who may be in need from my same hometown. I decided to go out and buy several boxes of pizza and feed the homeless. I know that that's something that they admire and appreciate. That's cheese. Oh, it's cheese, huh? That's cool, that's cool. That's cool. I love serving my community because it's like a self-evaluation moment. It shows you what you really made of and who you really are and what you're capable of doing. Hello? Hi, how you doing? No, 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 no. My name is Anthony Dupree. Oh. Yeah, my name is Anthony Dupree, and I just know that you know stuff. Like, you know, I wasn't sure if y'all was home. Oh, yeah, yeah, we need that. Yeah, absolutely. So, I don't really got much, but this is definitely something that's important to me. Brother. So, um, yeah, y'all can. Yeah, no problem, no problem. And um, I'm just, you know, I'm from God this city. Bless. Thank you so much. I'm from this city, so I, you know, definitely want to do something. Yeah. While delivering these boxes of pizza, I came across a couple who I was blessed to connect with. Uh, we didn't make lunch today. Oh, really? And it, yeah, we didn't. Wow. Make lunch. Yeah. And this is straight up. I'm done. Yeah. So I just wanted to, you know, show some gratitude and um, let y'all know that I'm, I stand with y'all. I'm here, you know. Anthony, who is my name? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But like the rapper, but the main, yeah, 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 that's oh. he, he the rapper. But no, yeah, I'm, a not, no. oh, I'm a singer. I'm a singer. So I, you know, I sing. I do all of that. Yeah. Oh. I'm glad that I could be a little bit of light in such a dark place in their world. I said I don't want to bother y'all too much, but I definitely appreciate this. I, I love doing oh, things I like this. You doing yeah, it. it's cold out here. Yeah, it is. If you want to take, take oh. your time to do something like that. 
I believe that prayer changes things. So it's nothing for me to just go to someone if they allow it and pray with them. And that is what this couple did. We had prayer, I fed them, and they were on their way. Oh, that's cool. Being around people who look just like me but are in different situations, that's inspiring to me and that is what keeps me grinding and going harder. The way I do it. Yeah, absolutely. God bless y'all for I know I'm doing it for somebody else, and I know that their life is going to change. After finally getting a chance to speak with Jalisha, I felt that tonight would be the perfect night for us to get together and just talk so that she can vent and so that I can even pour life into her. It's me. After finally getting through to my friend Jalisha and hearing her voice and speaking with her, I feel so good knowing that her and her children are safe. Where'd you get back? I've been, but I just got back a couple days ago. Really. Well, how was it? Um, uh, it was we missed you. I missed you. I missed you. One thing that I know about Jalisha that I can always count on is her being in great spirits. She never allowed anything around her to put a dent in her emotions. And that's one thing that I admire about my friend Jalisha. I was so confused when I got back home because I went to go see DJ and Trey and all of them, but right. they was telling me about you. Yeah, we had a... So... I was wake, awakened by, um, like my furnace was like knocking and then it was like a smoky smell in my house, but like I was asleep. So it just woke me up out of my sleep. So I'm like, you know, kind of like, what's going on? So I goes downstairs to my kitchen, try to turn the light on, but the light didn't come on. So I had my phone in my hands, so I had, I turned on the oh, flashlight. So what time was like, around what time was this? This was like 2.30 in the morning. Like I had got home from work, at, I get off at 9, pick tonight up at 9.30, so we got home probably about 10. Took me a shower and laid down probably about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And at 2.30, like, I, I mean, it's like bang, 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 bang. And I'm like, why is my furnace banging like that? And then I smell like a smoke smell. So that's when I went downstairs and I went in the kitchen. That's why I said I'm trying to turn the light on. And I'm like, well, like, why can't I turn the light on? Then I flash and I see all this smoke coming from like where the basement is. Because you know where the kitchen is yeah. and then the basement door right here. So it was like all this smoke. So I immediately, like I ran upstairs and I'm like, Tanaya, Tori, get up, put your stuff on. We going outside. Like, those kids, they move real fast that day. They usually move slow. Even Tori, and he moved really, really fast. But it ended up being, so we called the fire department and they came in probably about four minutes. So it ended up being the, my furnace in the basement actually caught fire. So I don't know. It's so amazing how strong she is. I admire that about her. So right now, I am currently at different hotels, you know, like Red Cross, they help me. But then, like, it's really just myself going to work every day and just providing for me and my kids, like, have food, have a shelter over our head. Like, I have to commute to take him to school because we you know we're in Newark so I have to go to Wilmington every day to commute to take him to school so it's been it's been a lot but you know Man, I'm just so I was so shook, shook up a little like I was shook up when I first heard the news I was not expecting this yeah like especially for it to happen to someone so genuine we were just talking about how like you always whenever I would go away or before I went away you would all we would always meet up there to have our parties or our yeah. farewells and then to just hear this news is so devastating. I wanted to do something special for Jalisha, not because she's my friend and she would have returned the favor and done something for me, but simply because she is a gift to this world. Jalisha is so vibrant, she's so energized, she's so happy and she's just so contagious with her love and her passion. And just hearing her story has caused me to look at life a little differently. 
I'm it's ready. always going to end the victory. And now you can attest and now you can identify with those who may have similar experiences or similar, you know, situations like this. Yeah. To say, I once was there. I know what it smelled like. I know what it felt so, like. Yes, absolutely. So you, you are definitely somebody example. And I'm glad that you are not allowing this reality to like really dictate, yeah, and consume you because it can really take you to a whole nother mindset. You can be done with people, done with church, and you can feel bitter. Like it can make you go through those different emotions and phases. Yeah. But I'm, you know, because of what you are to me and who you are to me and what you've done for me, I'm going to do something for you. So tomorrow I'm going to be making a deposit into your account. What? I'm going to make a deposit into oh, the account, whether it's for, you know, food or whether it's to assist That's with blessed. getting a new furnace or whatever. I'm going to do that because I know what you done for me. And oh, you know, I believe in Jaleesha just as much as she believes in me. People don't have to do anything for you. And like I pour, I try to pour out as much as I can, like as far as like myself and just being a good person to people. Because people are not genuinely good people. Like, you know, people always do things to see what they can get or what type of recognition that they get can get from doing things. So, like, anything that I have done for any of my friends, it's because I dearly yeah. love you. And I genuinely love you. And, like, when you're away, like, I'm telling you, I am rude. I talk about you so much when you're away. I'm like, my friend is in the play. Go see it, whatever. Like, I, I do because it's, it's great that you're doing that. And then you're just being, like... Someone else is looking up to you, yeah. you know, because they may be saying, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. But to see you, to see that you're doing that, like that's impacting the nation. That's what you're doing. Nothing that I do in this world and on this earth matters if those around me and even those connected to me are not either encouraged or inspired by the things that God allowed me to do. It's not what you do, but how you do it. It's not about what you own, but the things you can value. My life will forever be impacted because of the lives that I impact. We're all on this journey in life together. You are important. Take ownership of your life and continue to raise the standard. Somebody needs your impact. The impact has to continue.